Yo guys, welcome back to yet another video here at Trader's Journey on YouTube. Thanks very much for joining me on yet another video. Just before I get into this video, if you haven't checked out my Instagram at, uh, out as yet, it is Trader Journey underscore official. I do provide value every day on there through Instagram posts and story posts. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to give us a follow over there. If you do need any help, feel free to DM me as I do help everyone out on there as well. So let's get straight into this video guys. So the purpose of this video is just to discuss a simple swing trading strategy for 2021 that uh, is, is for high probability setups to ensure that you get these high probability trades to ensure consistency and profitable trading. If anyone has seen my previous videos in the lessons playlist, this, will, this screen will look very familiar. Um, and hopefully this will probably be a bit easier for you guys to understand. But um, I'm going to try and make it as simple and easy to learn as possible for any new beginner. This strategy is mainly aimed at the beginner trader. But I will look to to add on to this video at later stages just to just to give some more background and detail into my complete strategy. But this this video will show the exact basics of what you need to do to get started with swing trading. So let's get straight into this video, guys. So here we've got a chart up, which is which is United States Steel Corporation. I, this is the same chart which I was using on my last video. But as you can see here, we've got a simple supply and demand charted on the graph. We've got a trend line, a downward trend line, which is this yet represented by this yellow line. And I have a 50 EMA on the chart as well, which is this blue line. And you can also see I've got a volume indicator, which indicates the buyer pressure against the seller pressure. The red line shows the seller pressure and the blue line is your buying pressure. So a very simple, straightforward chart. There's not many indicators here. You don't need to use plenty indicators, just a few just to get assist you with confirmation for trades is enough. Um, but so step one guys with this swing trading strategy, which is what I use in an on an everyday basis is I like to combine two or three strategies. The first strategy is setting your demand and supply zones. I will create another separate video just going over how to accurately set these set these sort of areas up but in in the most basic sense of it it's highlighting the areas where you see imbalances where sellers take over or buyers take over now this green green sort of section here is where i know from historical price points we know buyers have taken over taken over the stock price and created a surge in the stock price and the red zone which is your supply zone is effectively where your sellers have taken over and reacted and caused the price to move downwards so a very simple um sort of simple sort of understanding to get from this and it's very easy hopefully for most of you to understand if anyone's struggling with this just let me know in the comments and i'll try and elaborate a bit further with these demand and supply zones but it's essentially where supply where sellers or buyers take over the stock price so as you can see i've done this here on the four hour chart for united states steel corporation very quick and easy way of doing it you've seen the highest point in this particular triangle and you've seen the lowest point which has caused a surge with the buyers and the demand so we can see here from the previous point it's reached this area of demand the price has surged upwards and again it's happened a third time in this triangle where the price has hit that particular area of demand and buyers have pushed the price upwards so firstly what you want to do is always look on the bigger time frames when swing trading the small time frames such as half an hour one hour those are irrelevant for swing trading because swing trading is all about holding on to trades for more than one day, potentially weeks. So you want to be looking at larger time frames to understand what is happening. The smaller time frames won't actually help you. They may help you when understanding when to enter a trade, but when understanding these setups, you want to be looking at bigger time frames. Four hour is probably the smallest time frame you want to be looking at with swing trading. You want to be looking at the daily time frame as well as the weekly time frame. But for now, we have this four hour time frame, and I will flick onto the daily time frame in a minute just to show you what it looks like. So, first step, guys, is of course set your supply supply and demand areas which are done here on the chart secondly you want to be looking for patterns now for 2021 and for 2020 20, sorry for 2020 that's just gone by we can see patterns have worked very well we've looked at breakouts that have been very profitable with breakouts and they seem to work when combined with this strategy so you want to be looking for patterns 
Um, you want to be looking for triangles. You want to be looking for trends, downward trends, upward trends. Triangles seem to be one of the most popular breakout strategies out there and it seems to work very well. It works well for me, so definitely combine triangles um, into your strategy. Look for these patterns. So in this particular instance, we've got a downward trend. So I followed that across and it's, it's now seeming to be a triangle uh, which has formed here. And what's very interesting is it's held its the demand area, which has been great. It's held the downward trend area, which is another area of confirmation. And you've got a triangle set up. I will draw the triangle setup just so you guys can see that clearly. So from the start of the triangle, which was around here, you've got a perfect triangle. So you can see that on a bigger sort of scale here, that triangle is a very clear setup. So look for the patterns, look for your supply and demand areas. And now secondly, this is where you want to be understanding where to enter the trades and when to exit trades. So knowing that we have a key area of demand here you know that this is a, you want to enter the trade as close as possible to your area of demand to ensure you have a high reward to risk ratio so just to add on to that guys you can see here i have the ema line which this is a 50 day ema so if you go into your settings you can change the length at the moment i've got a 50 day ema which is good for swing traders and that just helps me understand whether we are going into a downward trend or um, upward trend. It helps me give extra confirmation to any trade I'm looking to enter. At the moment, we're hugging that 50 day EMA, which to me seems very good as we start squeezing in this triangle. As it stays above this 50, 50 day EMA, that is extra confirmation for me to go long on this stock. Now the next and last and final confirmation, which I look for is buy versus sell pressure. Now you can see here on the bottom, this is the indicator which I have up and it's quite easy to understand. So I'll try and explain it in its most basic form. When the blue line is above the red line, that proves that you've got high, more buyers than you do sellers. When the red line crosses above the blue line, that just proves you have higher sellers against versus buyers. Um, so as you can see from when you compare the graph to the chart, you can see as buyers picked up and sellers dropped, you saw a surge in the price. So this is simple supply and demand strategy. And you can see as the blue line has stayed above um, the sellers, the price has continued to go up. So this is an extra confirmation which I use. I always look for additional buyers, more buyers than sellers, which will cause the price to move upwards. So in this particular point here in this four hour chart, you can see buyers and sellers are starting to fight. As the blue, as the blue and red line move closer towards each other, they are fighting against, against each other to, to move the price. And as they as they move apart, that is where you see your bigger moves. For instance, here on the 24th of November, as sellers started to drop, as buyers started to increase, you saw this massive green candle. So that is one another area of confirmation which I look for. So a very simple strategy and very easy to use. So what I'm looking here for here in particular for before entering this particular trade, um, this would be a swing for me. And knowing knowing how many days you would want you'd expect to see the stock reach the next level of supply It is at least a two, three dollar move, which is enough to make a significant amount with swing trades. You want to make sure you have got enough days till expiration on your contract. So I would at least get two or three weeks of expiration um, for this particular trade. Now, what I would finally wait for three areas to confirm before entering this trade, I will I would add an additional indicator just for pure volume. You want to see volume. This indicator on its own just shows buyers against sellers, which is great, but you want to see volume as well. Let me see if I can add that indicator whilst we are here. So you simply type in uh, volume and there you go. There's your, so as you can see, volume is fairly low compared to the previous larger moves we've seen in the stock. So I want to be seeing volume above average so you want to be seeing volume at least up with these large green bars where we've seen larger moves so as we're squeezing in this triangle we, as it exits you want to see volume spike and that is your additional confirmation so the last thing that i'd like to say as well guys is you need to ensure when you're doing these swing trades you have got all these boxes ticked 
you are exiting an area of demand, you are exiting an area of tr a triangle, and the price is squeezing, waiting for a breakout. You want to see your volume is well above average to ensure you've got enough volume and momentum to push the price to higher levels. You then want to ensure your buyers are higher than your sellers. So make sure the blue line is above your red line, or if not, it is just about to cross the red line. That is good enough confirmation. And you want to ensure before entering a trade, you are just above a key price level. Now this key price level in this instance is the price of 1705. So come Monday or Tuesday, if the price goes above, continues to break this triangle and breaks above 1705, that is your next additional confirmation. And your last confirmation is to ensure it's above the 50 EMA, which it currently is, which is a strong sign. And this candle wick shows you've got buying pressure just at that level here, which is again, additional confirmation. So a very easy strategy guys to understand. Just before I end here, I'm gonna go through a couple more scenarios so you guys can understand that this strategy is adaptable to every other stock and situation. It doesn't have to be one particular stock. You can adapt it. And I'm going to show you that now. If this is enough for you guys, you guys can log off, log off here. But I'm going to go through a few other stocks just to just to go through, and hopefully make more. Hopefully, it will make more sense to you guys as well. So this particular stock was United States Steel Corporation. I'm going to go through, let's say Tesla. Tesla, we went we went through. I get I guess on the last video, but I'll show you this again. As you can see, we're in an upward trend on the four-hour chart. Um, now would not be a good time to, to enter as it would appear that you're chasing the stock at four hour. It does seem to be overextended. Considering it is on a upward trend, you want to make sure the, the best point to enter this trade would be on the retracement of the stock back to the trend line. So I would wait for this stock to come back to the trend line, retest and wait for buying pressure and then re-enter to catch the impulsive move. Right now, it's already gone through that impulsive move having touched the trend line. So right now you would be chasing, so it wouldn't be a safe entry. So these sort of things you need to evaluate when trading, trading these types of stocks, you need to think outside the box and look for a safe point of entry and a safe point of uh, an exit area. You need to plan for the entry and exit for every trade. Right now, going through, going over what we did in previously in this video, you can see buying pressure is well above selling pressure, which indicates that the price is going to continue to move upwards. But right now, what's very interesting is buying pressure seems to be dropping, which, which hence you can see it pointing downwards. Um, selling pressure is also dropping. So volume levels have dropped as we ended the year. So this would be on watch to see what happens, but what you'd expect based on this trend line is you'd expect this to retrace, to come back to the trend line um, to ensure that would be your safe point of entry. Now, the second confirmation, which we again went over in the previous scenario, this is the 50 EMA, which is this thin blue line. Let me see if I can make it slightly bigger so you guys can see that. That's better. So you can see this blue line and the blue, when, when this 50 EMA is still intact, which it has been, that is a, a key, an additional confirmation to go long on the stock. And if still intact, the price will continue to move upwards. What would be a good indication of the reversal of this trend is if it breaks that 50 EMA and you see strong, re strong reversal below that line, that may be an indication that a reversal is about to happen. But I'm not gonna get into that into this video. This is purely spotting the trends and playing the trends. So in this instance here where you saw on the 21st of December, there was a retracement back to the trend line. As it hugged the 50 EMA and you saw buying pressure push above the 50 EMA, this would be a very good point of entry. Either the second green candle or the, or the fourth green candle, that would be your point of entry. And that is the safest point of entry for, for these types of trades. You don't want to be entering a trade when it's already extended and already made that move, that impulsive move. If you're, under, if you're not understanding the impulsive and retracement terminologies, please be sure to check out the previous video which I uploaded, which goes into those details. So that again, so this, this just shows that you can adapt this particular strategy to any other stock. What you can also do, I haven't got it on this chart here, but if you wish, if you're 
if your trend lines aren't very clear, you can start to set up supply and demand, but with upward trends and downward trends, they don't seem to work very well because with supply and demand and trend lines, trend lines work in a sort of stepped process where supply and demand work best in ranges. Um, but nevertheless, you can still still use this strategy. I will start just quickly putting some sort of areas up here. What you want to be doing with downward trends and, and upward trends is you want to just be sticking to price levels rather than rather than supply and demand areas. They don't work as well with this strategy, but depending on whether you're trading triangles and breakouts, supply and demand works best with those type of patterns. But with upward trends and downward trends, they're a lot easier to trade. So and they're a lot easier to spot. So I would definitely recommend beginners to not overcomplicate this strategy. Look at the look at the trend and try and play the trend as simple as possible rather than drawing additional stuff on your charts and giving you extra confusion. But this can be used as extra confirmation if you if you so wish. Um, if you want safer entries, supply and demand works great. For instance, this was a key area of supply. Oh, it's the wrong color. Let me just change that. This is a key area of supply as we can see. Prices come in, rejected. Prices come in again and rejected. But we saw this strong area of buyers and it pushed through. So a good point of entry for a day trade, for instance, rather than a swing trade, would be to enter 658 at the break of supply and ride the stock price up to 685. That That is as, as, as easy as you can get it, and that just gives you a safer entry point if you play supply and demand zones. But like I said, guys, it's not necessary for swing trading if you are trading upward and downward trends. Simply a, a trend line and these few indicators is enough to swing trade. Um, so that's as simple as it gets and keep in mind as well guys your trend line doesn't have to be extremely accurate I know sometimes price, it, price points sometimes miss it but not in this instance like here for instance the price point didn't actually hit the trend line but it was near enough so don't expect completely accurate setups as long as it, as long as it works and you're roughly getting the good entry points and exit points that is enough for you to trade these do these swing trades and this is what I'll specifically be looking for in 2021 It's going to be a very straightforward strategy and I'm hoping most of you can benefit from this strategy as well. Um, just before I end it here, I'll just do one more final scenario just before I end here again, similar to Tesla, we've got Netflix. Um, and again, you can see the trend has just started to form. It's not actually been in play for very long, but it's just started to form here on the four hour chart. It started to hug the 50 EMA as you can see here. So the 50 EMA, if you don't have a linear trend line such as this yellow line here, you can actually in fact use your 50 EMA as your trend line. That is if you see any inconsistencies and you want to use something a bit more accurate, I would suggest using the 50 EMA as the price hugs that line and that could be your essentially your trend line. So you can see that on Tesla as well the trend line acted as the support and the trend line. So you can use the 50 EMA if you so wish. That is just as accurate, if not more accurate than linear lines. So that really covers off the strategy. Um, I'll be looking at patterns. Look through my previous videos as I discuss other types of patterns. But um, pattern trading, looking at trends, this is probably the easiest way to, to ensure you profit from these swing trades. So that really covers off this video. I hope you did gain some value from it. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button, drop a like and drop me some comments if you have any feedback or suggestions for new videos of anything you would like to learn. And uh, be sure to check me out on Instagram. If you guys want to learn something um, from, a, from a, a full tutorial point of view, then be sure to check out the Discord community as that is where I provide most of my value and takes up most of my time. So thanks very much for watching. I will catch you all on the next video. Take care. Goodbye.